Punk. Hi there, my name is Lulu O'Connor and I am the founder of Clothes Doctor and welcome to our online tutorial series. I think this is episode six of our series where Chris and Ellie are going to teach you how to hand hem jeans. Um, and if you, like me, are stuck in lockdown and getting a bit bored trying to find ways to keep yourself entertained and learn new skills, then hopefully you'll find this really interesting and informative. So please sit back and enjoy. So we're going to start off as we always do by going through the equipment that we'll be using. First off, we're actually using a slightly different thread this time. We call it a top stitching thread. As you can see, it's quite a lot thicker than normal cotton and very strong. So because we're going to be doing a top stitch, on the hem of these jeans. Um, we want it to show to match in with the top stitching on the rest of the jeans. Uh, we've got our tape measure, um, but we will be using that on the next pair of jeans. On this one, we don't need it. And then we've got our trusty pins. They're essential because we'll be pinning the hem um, under before we start to stitch. And we've got our strong needle. Now, you'll recognise this because we sent you one of these in the darning package. So you'll be able to use that needle to be able to hem any jeans if you want to. It's strong and it's got a really good point on it. So now that we've gone through the equipment, um, we're going to start. These jeans are um, supposed to be frayed at the ends, but um, we want to take them up because the fraying is just getting a little bit annoying now. So Ellie's going to start by trimming the long ends of the fray, just so that it gives us a nice straight edge to work with. we're going to do a double hem on this so it really is just a case of taking the really long ones away um, just so that they don't one get in the way and two uh, come out of the double hem and hang below the jeans so i think that's is there one left there really just So that's a nice even edge to start. So to begin, Ellie's going to fold the jeans over. Because these don't really need shortening as such, we're just going to do a very narrow folded hem. So we're going to fold it once and then over again so that um, from the inside, the hem looks nice and neat. Now we'll pin that as so and go all the way around the jeans folding the same amount in on what we call a double fold. Now, when you get to the double seam, this is quite a toughie. So um, we'll probably pin either side of that. Like so, 
and we're now getting round And there we go. So as you can see from the inside, there's no frayed edges or anything um, to tickle your legs or hang down below the hem. So it's, it's quite nice and neat. So Ellie's now ready to stitch. So again, about a meter's length of thread. And of course you can use your needle threader if you need to, but the eye on this needle is lovely and big, so the thread goes through nicely. Now we're going to knot the end of this. lovely now when we put the anchor stitch through the jeans we're actually going to go inside the folded hem to hide the knot and then Ellie will come out and be working from the right side of the jeans Lovely. Now, the stitch we're going to use here is what we call a back stitch, which is going to replicate as close as we possibly can to the machine stitch that the rest of the jeans have got. So she will go in and make one stitch. And this you can pull quite tightly because obviously you need it to be firm. And then she's going to go about three millimetres away from the underside, up through, and then back into where the other stitch ended. And as you can see, that's that's a really nice, neat little stitch. Now she's going to come again in the back and gauge the right distance like so and then back down through where the second stitch ended keeping your stitches fairly firm because you want the hem to sit nicely. Again, through the back, engage the right distance. You can move it backwards and forwards till you get the right distance for your stitch and back down through where the third stitch ended. Now Ellie will go along and do that for you a moment, showing you as she goes. It's a nice repetitive stitch, so you can really relax while you're doing this. And it's quite visual as well, so you can 
um, as you're going along, you can um, make sure you're getting the right distance between your stitches. And as you can see, the needle is nice and strong, so it's actually going through the layers of denim quite well.
And of course, if you find that the pins get in your way, you'll have noticed Ellie has taken them out as she's gone halfway across them. Um, that is absolutely fine to do because you don't want to stab yourself. Um, and they are only there really for an anchor. So as soon as you get halfway across one pin, um, your hem really will stay in place for you anyway. Another good tip is if you don't want to go to the expense of buying top thread, you can actually thread your needle with four strands of normal cotton. And when that's knotted together and even, that will also give the effect of top stitch thread, making it much thicker. and stronger as well. Now, as you can see, we're coming up to one seam. Generally on jeans, you will have one double stitched seam and one single seam. Uh, sometimes the double stitched seam is on the inside of the leg. Other times it's on the outside of the leg. Um, they do make it quite thick to be able to hand stitch through. Um, on the single seam it's not too bad but we'll show you how to avoid having to try and go through the double stitched seam when Ellie gets round to the other side.
So as you can see, Ellie's getting to the end of a thread. So what we will do is finish off by doing some small hemming stitches underneath just to um, stop the thread from unraveling. And that forms a nice neat knot. Um, and then she will add some more thread as we were saying earlier, any more than a meter of thread and it does tangle. So sometimes you just can't avoid having to finish off and add some more thread. But what Ellie will do is knot the thread as before and then come up from inside the jeans to the point that she wants to start her next stitch from. There we go, and no one is any the wiser that you've had to add some more thread. Now we're coming to that troublesome double stitched seam. So we're going to show you how to catch that down because you, it would be nigh on impossible to get your needle through it. So we'll in a minute turn the the jeans to the inside. So as you can see, we've now come to this really troublesome double seam. So we're actually going to show you how to get around that because you would never actually get your needle through that. So we're going to turn the jeans to the inside and Ellie is going to do some hemming stitches just to catch that down so it doesn't um, annoy you or undo um, or cause a buckle in the, the jeans when you've got them on.
And as you can see, it really is a tough, tough piece of fabric. Um, and you will get that on every pair of jeans. But as always, we've found a way to get around it, so don't worry. And of course, the cotton is strong, so you don't have any worries about that breaking. And now Ellie's got to the edge of it. She's going to, to knot off. Um, securely now as you can see she's left a loop in her last stitch put her needle through it and that gives you a lovely, neat, secure knot. So she'll cut now and we will show you the finished result. And as you can see, with a good press, we now have one very neatly hemmed jeans that will tie in with the original top stitching. So now we're going to move on to a lot of customers ask us how to do, or ask us to do a hem with the original jeans hem kept in place. So we're now going to show you how you can do that at home by hand as well. So now we're going to do um, a hem on these jeans where we are keeping the original hem as is. They're going to be taken up by one inch. So this is where our tape measure will come into play again. Ellie will mark one inch up and add a pin. Now she will do that all the way around the leg of the jeans. And you'll note that she's actually going from the stitching on the jeans rather than the bottom of the, the leg of the jeans. Great. Now, you'll note this is a very, very different technique to a standard hem. So, again, Ellie will thread her needle because she will need a decent amount of thread in this one. So, a good metre length. That's it. Now, my advice for you on this technique is either to use a very strong top thread or thread your needle with at least four strands of cotton. Uh, 
and are not as normal. So to start, now this stitch is called a ladder stitch. Um, so Ellie will go in at the edge of one seam. So she's going to start there. She will do her first stitch just above the stitched hem, leaving the top stitching clear. And then she's going to do a long stitch to the where she has pinned. And then she's going to go across about four mil. Like so. And then come back down. To just above the top stitching again. Again up to the pin and across about four millimeters. And then back down just above the stitching. Now she's going to replicate that all the way along. Now that the stitch is taking shape, you can see really why they call it a ladder stitch. So this one is done in two parts. So you will go from seam to seam. And then do the second part of the hem seam to seam again. So today we will stop when we get to the side seam, um, but you would replicate this going down the other side of the, the leg as well. Right, so the reason we only we do this in two parts is because the next step of the process is very gently but firmly Ellie will now pull these stitches
lovely. Now, as you can see, um, that now gives you the effect of the jeans being taken up, but you still have your original jeans hem there. A good press. And that will give you your original hem. And now what Ellie is doing again is she's just securing that really, really tough double seam ready to be able to start the other side of the trouser leg. And it's the same principle as before. A loop, stitch through the loop and pull and that gives you a nice secure knot. And then you can now see the difference between the one leg that's been turned up and the one that hasn't.